The 1999 movie The Mummy starring Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz draws heavily from ancient Egyptian mythology and folklore. Now, the film revolves around the resurrection of an ancient Egyptian priest named Imhotep, who was cursed for attempting to resurrect his forbidden love, Anuksunamun, and seeks revenge in the modern world. The mythology of ancient Egypt, including concepts of mummification, curses, and the afterlife, forms the spine of the film's narrative. Imhotep's resurrection taps into the belief in the power of spells and rituals, while the cursed artifacts in the Book of the Dead are inspired by Egyptian funerary practices. Now, the portrayal of the mummy as this vengeful supernatural entity draws from the fear associated with disturbing the dead in Egyptian culture. Now, this belief is deeply rooted in the ancient Egyptians' understanding of the afterlife and the sanctity of burial practices. It is thought that to disturb the body or the tomb's goods could bring about a curse over the grave robber or the intruder. Egyptian tombs and burial sites often have curses inscribed at the entrance or the walls of the tomb. One famous example is the so-called Curse of the Pharaohs, which is actually a modern term, but many tombs did have warnings against trespassers. Additionally, the film incorporated elements of Egyptian deities, such as the god Anubis, who is depicted as overseeing the underworld and judgment of the dead, which is actually accurate in ancient Egyptian mythology. Aside from Anubis, the movie also introduces Horus. And who is Horus? Well, Horus is one of the most significant and complex deities in Egyptian mythology. Often depicted as a falcon or a man with the head of a falcon, Horus is primarily associated with kingship and the sky. And he embodies the, the divine right of the pharaohs to rule Egypt. And the reigning pharaoh was often considered a manifestation of Horus on Earth. Now, there is also the Eye of Horus, also known as the Wajet. And it is a powerful protective symbol representing healing, protection, and restoration. Now, Horus was worshipped across Egypt with major cult centers in, for example, Edfu, where the Temple of Horus stands. His worship often intersects with that of other gods, such as Ra and Osiris, his father. Now, enough about Horus. What about the Book of the Dead? Is that an actual real book? The answer, technically, is yes. However, the ancient Egyptians knew the book as the book of coming forth by day. Now, according to archaeologists, it is a collection of funerary texts and spells intended to guide the deceased through the afterlife. It includes prayers, a manual for the deceased, the incantations to navigate challenges of the afterlife and achieve a favorable judgment. Now, the book covers a wide range of topics from protecting the body and the soul to empowering the deceased to invoking gods and ensuring safe passage through the afterlife. Well, what about the Golden Book of Amun-Ra? Is that a real book? And that's either depicted in The Mummy or The Mummy Returns. I can't remember. But is that a real book? And the answer is no, it's not. Now, the next popular question that is often wondered is, was there an ancient Egyptian priest named Imhotep? And quite surprisingly, I found yes. Now, his legacy is quite different from the villainous character depicted in the film. So here are some quick facts about the real Imhotep. He lived during the 27th century BCE, holding many important roles of the Third Dynasty. He was a chancellor, high priest of the sun god Ra at Heliopolis. He was an architect and physician. And after his death, he was worshipped as a god, um, a god of wisdom, medicine, and architecture. And temples were dedicated to him. And he was often associated with the Greek god of healing, Asclepius. The actual historical figure doesn't exactly seem villainous now, does he? Well, that's pop culture for you. While the mummy takes liberties with Egyptian mythology for entertainment purposes, it has effectively created a compelling narrative that blends adventure, horror, and the elements of ancient lore. Now that is all that I have for you today for this video. Thank you so much for joining me in analyzing the myths, legends, and lore used in the 1999 movie, The Mummy. In the next film that we analyze together, we will be examining the ancient Egyptian myths, legends, and lore of the Marvel series, Moon Knight. Until then, please feel free to explore my myths, legends, and lore playlist. And as always, keep loving history and stay curious.